let me, we are really pushing have, the time, but let me just minutes. see if there are some questions from the audience. Yes, uh, Meshi Treat uh, from Israel. Uh, the microphone working? No. Can, can you try to make the microphone uh, alive as opposed to asleep? Why don't you try to speak out loudly? I think another microphone will come. Here we are. But? No? Oh, ah, no. yes. Thank you. Uh, I, want, I want to make a comment and a question. A comment is that I want to tell Mr. Fredberg that today there is no need for burying all these uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear remains. There is today technology which can, which can really deal with it without burying it. So it is exist, it's working in the United States and different other places. So we can read of this, uh, of this uh, let's say, junk of the, of the, of the atomic uh, uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear uh, uh, power stations without burying them, burying it. Secondly, I would like to ask Mr. Pion about what do you think the chances to have in the future, seems future, a cool fusion, cold fusion. That, that would change everything if we have a possibility to arrive to Nuclear cold fusion, fusion then you have energy as much as you want without any, 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 Thank without you. any, 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 any remains. That Thank you. That would be the, the, the magic grail, absolutely. Uh, another question. Yes, yes. The gentleman here at the front. John, over there. Oh, Mr. Narayan first, and then, okay. then John. Yeah. <coughs> um, I, this was a very interesting session, I must say, and I, I'm very thankful to. I used to be a member of the Indian Atomic Energy Commission. I also played a role in the India-US nuclear, nuclear deal. Uh, m my question is actually to Mr. Servant Schreiber, because now I'm engaged in a thing to bring back the nuclear debate into India, because energy is one of our problems. How reliable is what you have said, because I would like to know, and I hopefully after this I'll have a further conversation with you, is it possible to really use this in a commercial way, or is it still a pie in the sky at the moment? I understood what you said, but is a realistic one, because in my lifetime, I don't have too many years left, but I would like to see whether we can push it together. At the moment in India, I have a certain amount of traction still possible, so I would like to have a a very honest and realistic assessment as to whether this is possible. And you hear so much about halium, thorium, new reactors and all that coming up. Does all this underwrite what you're trying to say? Thank you. Thank you very much. And a final, uh, final question here. Gentleman with the medicine beard. Uh, in addition to what Honorable Narayanan sir has said, my crux question is that is thorium is really viable uh, solution, Franken, a question for you. And a comment is that if there is a viable solution, then please uh, sh share that under the technology transfer. Thank you very much. Okay. And a final question from uh, uh, Mohammed Dair. Uh, right hand side. Merci. Alors, c'est une question qui aurait pu être posée aussi dans le l'atelier le, sur les les minerais. Alors, euh, évidemment qu'il y a plusieurs euh, types de technologies, mais certaines sont utilisatrices de minerais euh, rares. Et un certain nombre d'analystes relèvent que si l'on devait convertir le parc électrique, le parc véhicule en Angleterre en électricité, il faudrait deux fois la production mondiale de cobalt, trois quarts de la production mondiale de lithium, La moitié de la production mondiale de cuivre, évidemment, je parle que du parc de l'Angleterre. Ça, c'est une équipe de chercheurs euh, euh, au voilà, muséum qui en parle. 
Euh, et, et évidemment, la remarque, c'est qu'il n'y aura jamais assez de mines pour que la Chine, les États-Unis, l'Union européenne, la Russie euh, rendent leurs véhicules électriques, gèrent le big data, la constellation des satellites, l'industrie d'armement. Alors la, la remarque aussi importante, c'est qu'une mine de cuivre peut consommer jusqu'à 40 millions de mètres cubes d'eau. Or, les, les six plus grandes entreprises mondiales utilisent, exploitent leurs mines dans des zones qui se caractérisent par des manques d'eau. Alors, quand on envisage les questions technologiques, est-ce que ces politiques sont prises en compte Est-ce que ces financements sont orientés est-ce que ce débat est organisé Merci. Merci, Mohamed. C'est une question très, très uh, pertinente, en fait. Uh, I think there may definitely be more questions, but I want to stop there because we really are running out of time. Um, so, we have questions. Thorium, nuclear, um, the uh, and rare quickly, earths. Uh, I think, uh, and I think that was more or less, unless I've forgotten something. Uh, who wants to tackle us? Let's go, uh, Franklin. I, I can uh, is your thorium a pipe dream in the end? First of all, uh, yeah, well, it's a great question because, you know, I, I was skeptical. So uh, this was not my idea. It's somebody else's idea. I just stumbled upon it. And I looked at it for almost two years before I jumped into this because I had a lot of experts tell me that it was uh, viable. So, yes, I can assure you uh, that... Uh, we have a very solid basis that it's way beyond the research stage. We're in the engineering stage. It's just a different way to look at it. So yes, we are credible. And that's why we have those partners. Otherwise, they wouldn't come. And I just want to, to, to say one thing about fusion before I think, Friedberg, you want to talk about fusion too. But, you know, um, something that I, I learned on my own, I had never read it anywhere. Fusion doesn't happen on Earth. Just doesn't happen on Earth doesn't happen in the stratosphere, in the atmosphere, on the surface, in the ground, in the core. doesn't happen. Happens in the sun. Yeah. And the sun is a million times bigger than the Earth. And it happens because you have heat and gravity pressure. So to replace gravity from the sun just for, with extra heat is not, to me, self-evident. I'm not sure this will ever and I know I'm going against a lot of common wisdom, I'm not sure this will ever produce positive energy. How much energy you put into, how much energy you put out. That's my only uh, way to say we should focus on what we know works because we're in the urgency. And that's uh, a comment from someone future. living by sand. So <laughs> it's interesting. So it's really fusion that is the, the complete uh, pipe dream. Um, Friedman or Nicolas? I, I think Nicolas first. Huh? Okay. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, very around. briefly, please. Yeah, yeah maybe I'm just going to uh, try to uh, an attempt to answer your comment at least on, on you know, minerals, etc. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, there's no other way to say it that um, no, we don't know how to organize a system without creating entropy. And, and so we are replacing in one, which was CO2 and GHG emissions, with another, with another one, which is how are you going to sustainably, sustainably mine all those materials. Yes, it will be an issue. I think, again, um, we're going to have to work on efficiency. We can't have the same amount of uh, energy per capita that we, we had in the past. So we're going to have to work on efficiency. Recycling, circular e economy is critical. And I think in that sense, um, both what Franklin and Frank are doing is critical. And this is the reason why I was saying, if we don't adapt our models, our investment models, to integrate externalities, we will never get it. I, I am fairly certain of that. And our model today are ill-designed for this because financial theory does not take into account uh, externalities. Frank, any comment on, uh, I mean, you've got a real compliment from Friedberg, who's, I think Friedberg is basically one of nature's natural skeptics in a way, he's a realist, but, uh, but he was very praiseworthy of uh, your, um, what is it, called? A, a fuel, I suppose you want to call it. Um, perhaps you have the solution. For, given that transportation is really the biggest single um, contributor to climate change at the moment. Now, I tried, I tried to, to show with the presentation the global perspective so that we 
have the ability and we could be proud about our technology. It's photovoltaic, has a huge efficiency. And, in, uh, and such a plant is in the end 50 times more efficient than uh, uh, a regular forest. And, and so we can really uh, create our future, uh, a real future for, for humankind. And um, uh, I think it's, it's, it's wonderful to, to present this also and uh, motivate also financing guys. Uh, companies uh, who create the, to, to create the biggest, biggest business ever on, on this earth. And uh, I think um, it's a positive uh, Thank you. I, I, view. Friedbert, I'm going to give you the final 30 seconds. I've just described you as a, as a natural skeptic, which you're probably not. I mean, you may be a dreamer, I don't know. But uh, what's, uh, are you feeling, I mean, this panel I think has been fascinating. Does it make you feel actually Optimistic or I'm not sure? absolutely optimistic if we unleash the powers of technology. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me let me give you a, a little story a, a in 30 seconds, I hope. A, a German bestseller in 1922, the bestseller of all uh, in that time, of a guy called Kellermann, and it's called The Tunnel. And it's about technology. Uh, giving uh, the possibility to pave a tunnel, to dig a tunnel between, the, uh, uh, between Europe and the United States. Uh, we had no planes, and at that time this was revolutionary, and they went for it. And they financed it, and it took them 25 years. Uh, very difficult process. And at the end of this, they had a big celebration in Europe with all the trains coming, and suddenly they saw a plane. <laughs> so in these 25 years, technological revolutions had happened which people could not foresee 25 years ago. And therefore, my main point, uh, sir, is not, is it viable? We cannot decide about this. No. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense what has been said here. But we should be open to these new technologies and not just say, well, we have solar and we have wind and that's it. No, there is so much more going around and we should have an open eye and an open heart and an open brain for Thank that. Thank you very much, Sheila. I must say, at the very beginning, I claim to be a human being. And I think the great thing about human beings is that, um, that and the, the, the real uh, quality of the human species is that it has the ability to create and to think. So I think this has been a fascinating panel. Thank you so much. I think you deserve a huge round of applause. Thank you.